minutes. Hey Siri, turn off Apple TV in five minutes. Sorry, I can't schedule commands. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my channel Tech with Eddie which is all about integrating your IoT devices with your preferred home automation ecosystem. You know very well by now that my videos are all about using DIY platforms and their plugins to integrate my not so certified IoT devices into Apple HomeKit. The most important thing here is to get the same rich home automation experience by spending less. So please do take a look and don't feel shy to hit the like and subscribe button to follow along. Now we know very well that the Apple TV is supported officially within HomeKit. And then uh, why do this video? Well, this is for us, the parents who have kids in particular and who have overtaken the living room. And at times they don't go to bed uh, when they have to so on my continuous quest, in today's video, we will add the Apple TV as an accessory and get more control to it to add automations as well as add delay timers to turn off the Apple TV. So no more screaming or shouting from the kids, no more sulky faces. Everybody was warned when the TV is going off. So for all of this integration to work with Apple HomeKit, we will need obviously just an Apple TV, either the 4K version or the high definition version. As always, I've broken down the video into three parts with their timestamps in the description. They are one, adding the TV as an accessory, two, configuring the delay timer switch, and three, some simple home automation ideas. And also don't forget to stay till the end to know which video is coming up next week. So let's not waste time, like I always say, and let's jump into this tutorial. Alrighty, let's log in into our Hoops UI. You can do the same using Hobridge. And uh, what I've done is let's go to the plugin section and look for the two plugins, which is first the Apple TV remote and, this, and the second one is the delay switch. I've already downloaded and installed them just to ensure the flow of the video is much more faster. So the first things first, what we got to do is configure the Apple TV remote. And also on the left hand side, I've got my Wise cam looking at the screen. So to configure the Apple TV remote, we will need first to run a package installer. So let's copy the code. Uh, this one is required to extract the credential that will be used in the configuration. So let's type sudo and paste the code and hit enter. Now, once that's completed, let's go ahead and extract the code. And this is the command Apple TV pair. Let's paste it. And you should see a code that pops around to your TV. And uh, let's go back to the screen and type in the code 4447 and hit enter. So once the pairing is complete, the credential will be generated and whenever you uh, run this command again the same credentials is uh, presented so please copy and save this code just in case you want to use it in the future now let's go over to the configuration click on configuration and uh, let's go to the plugin page let's copy this one first the basic devices let's name it as living ATV and then later we're going to uh, paste the code over here and let's see what other configurations we can add so we can add a power on off switch uh, the TV enablement which which you can add in as an accessory and you can add in a global play pause switch for all of your um, bundle identifiers which is the next syntax over here so you can add in specific bundle identifiers like Disney Plus, YouTube, and all of the channels that you have installed over the Netflix. So it all depends on you. You can add them if you want. But for this video, just for the sake of this video, we'll make it very simple and uh, move forward. So I'm going to just copy these six lines. And I'm just going to enable the on-off switch. Call it as 
ADV plus, ADV on. I'm going to remove this one out and I'm going to keep the play pause. Now what you want to do is remove the last comma sign as you will get an error with the plugin configuration. There are other features as well in the plugin. You can enable APIs and go into full-fledged automation and even let the cursor select the apps and all. We're not going to do that. Uh, but yeah, if you want to, if you want to uh, take it further, there's a lot more that goes on over here. I'm kind of keeping it simple. And before you hit uh, save changes, make sure you copy the credentials. So I'm going to copy the credentials, paste the credentials and go into uh, save changes. So once the save changes, let's go into the logs and we should see the TV has been added already. Let's do one thing. Let's uh, play something on the channel. Let's see if we can control it. So I'm going to use my iPhone. To control the Apple TV. So I've got the switch over here, opening it up. It pauses. It plays. If I turn down the on switch, the Apple TV will go off. And you can also see in the logs that it has gone off. And you can also see the bundle identifier. If I turn on my Apple TV, you should see the TV coming on. So there you are, you have the Apple TV configured. We can see it in the logs that is responding to the TV. You can pause and you can play. So now let's move ahead and have the uh, delay switch uh, configured as well. So let's hit on configuration, add accessory. So all you got to do is, is very quick. Um, the name of the accessory, so I'll, I'll call it as TV5. So I want to turn off the TV in five minutes. And only one thing you got to watch out is if you want to, uh, the time has to be added in milliseconds. So let's have five minutes in milliseconds. So then this is the value. So you copy, you go over here. Now, if you want, you can add in a sensor. So basically, if you have in, uh, in your living room a sensor, if there is no body there, you can turn off the TV as well. OK, so this is an additional uh, automation we, we can add in into the So, so uh, one of the things you got to do is leave it as no and uh, leave the uh, motion sensor as as on. And let's click on save changes again. So once you come come to the um, Apple Home, you will see two switches over here. You'll already see the five minutes switch. You, you won't be able to do anything if you turn because it's a stateless switch. There's no actions. So let's quickly go into the automation and uh, see where the magic really happens. Now, we've added the TV as well as we have the dummy timer switch configured. Now let's do some simple home automation uh, examples and then it's up to you to use CD shortcuts. Sky is the limit. So we click on automation, we click on add. And the first thing, the first uh, simple example is the automation. So in this one, if there is, if there is, if detects, stop detects motion, you can trigger, turn it off. So you can say next. You can, can go to ATV, click on it, you say next, you can show controls, turn it off, say done. So that is your first uh, automation example. Second automation example is when an accessory is controlled. So in this case, TV5, next, Turn off ADV. It's on. 
turn off. So this is the second automation. So basically, um, if you turn on the, the TV5 switch in five minutes, it will trigger the ATV off. The third example is if you, if you use, if anybody arrives first, based on your, um, based on your location, you can turn some certain automations and using the bundle identifier in your configuration, you can turn on a particular app. So, so in this case, we don't have that switch. All you got to do is add in that switch using the bundle identifier and it will, it will appear over here. So you can turn that on as well. So yeah, there it is. We could all, uh, add in three simple automations and also uh, turn off the TV using a switch. Finally, there we are. Collaboratively, we have added the Apple TV as well as use the timer switch to run some automations. So next time, putting the kids or the family to bed is just a switch away. Now, to keep all of this going, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button because that's the motivator, that's the driver, the more the merrier for bringing all of this content for us. And if there's anything I can help with, don't feel shy to leave, uh, to leave a comment down below. And do visit the developers page as well. Do give them a star because that's their uh, motivator as well. Now, what's coming up next week? I will show you on how to integrate your PlayStation into, uh, into Apple HomeKit. So stay tuned for that as well. So my friends, until the next time, stay safe, have a nice day, cheers, and happy automation.